Hello there, this is Thunder from HG Central, back again with another narration for this video from MattJ155, and today we'll be showcasing all of the prize cards from Gran Turismo 2. Compared to the first game, there is much, much more to cover this time around. Let's get started. As you would expect, we begin with where most players start, the license tests. Getting all golds on the tests that make up each individual license will earn you a car, and with double the licenses from the first game, it means there are six prize cars to unlock here in total. All golds on the B license rewards the Spoon Honda S2000. A lightly tuned variant of the standard S2000, it can be useful for a few early races in the game thanks to its good handling. Though it may not be as good as the other licensed prize cars, the feat of getting all golds will make you feel like you've really earned it. The car, as well as the next four prize cars, is available in multiple colors, so if you want to unlock them all, you'll need to transfer them from other game saves. All golds on the A license greets us an old friend from Gran Turismo 1, the Dodge Concept Car. Though not overly fast, the Concept Car is light and handles well. Unlike the first game, however, it has a racing modification, albeit the special purple and yellow colors from the first game that which are reminiscent of the special Concept Car in GT1. All golds on the brand new International C license gives us another familiar car, the Mitsubishi 3000 GTLM Edition. Despite its new, now localized name, it's the same old GTO LM edition from the first game, with both colors intact. It's still a very good car, but does tend to suffer from some understeer. We will be referencing this car later on in the game with another prize car, so stay tuned. All golds on the International B license gives us the Honda CRX Del Sol LM edition, yet another returning car from the original Gran Turismo, with both color schemes intact. It's still a great little car in terms of performance and handling, and has the added bonus this time around of being eligible for rally events. All golds on the International A license gives us one more returning vehicle, the Mitsubishi FTO LM Edition, with both color schemes intact once more, and still just as amazing to drive in this game as it was in the first, as well as also being able to enter rally events. Lastly, all goals on the difficult Super License rewards the Toyota GT199. The car was Toyota's second attempt to crack victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans after their efforts did not go to plan in 1998. Entering three cars, they managed to take the top two qualifying positions, yet during the race they would be dealt with a combination of reliability issues, punctures, and accidents that took both leading cars out. The remaining number three car driven by Ukio Kariyama, Kaichi Tushia, better known as the Drift King, and Toshio Suzuki tried to climb its way up from starting in eighth to take victory, but a tire blowout in the final hour forced the car to finish second behind the LMP class BMW V12 LMR. The car did, however, win in the GTP class, at least giving Toyota that accomplishment. The GT1 is one of the very best cars in the game, so your efforts in getting all golds will have been very worthwhile. Enjoy driving it in whichever races you may wish to participate with it, or just drive it for fun. After obtaining our licenses, we start in the special events, beginning with the FF Challenge, as both the Sunday Cup and Clubman Cup don't offer any cars as rewards for completing the events, as they serve more as a starting point for most newcomers to gain experience. The first race in the FF Challenge sees players taking on Tahiti Road with any FF drivetrain car with 295 BHP or less. Finishing the race in first place rewards the player the Honda Mugen Accord SIRT, which can be won in one of several color schemes, including green, two different shades of white and silver, black, blue, and red. Overall, it serves as a fairly well-tuned and well-performing Accord with 190 BHP as standard. However, it's overshadowed by another Accord, which we'll see later in this video. As with the next two prize cars, the Accord does not have a racing modification. Race number two takes place at Midfield Raceway, which was a new track to the series at the time. And the prize car is the Tom's T111, a modified AE111 Toyota Corolla. It performs well as an FF machine, as long as you like Toyotas that come in super bright yellow, has an aero kit, and has 172 BHP in stock form. The last race takes place at Trial Mountain. The prize car for this race is the Honda Mugen Prelude Type S 
which serves as an all-around decent prelude, if somewhat slightly underpowered for the model involved, as it boasts 211 BHP and comes only in a Milan Red color scheme. The FR Challenge is next on the player's hit list for any car with an FR drivetrain, with the first round bearing a power limit of 295 BHP. The reward for the opening round at Clubman Stage Route 5 is the Nissan Sil 80, a returning prize from the original Gran Turismo. It's a favorite among Gran Turismo drifters, yet is ineligible for racing in the 180 and Sylvia events at the Nissan dealership. As in the first game, the car can be won in three colors, yellow, blue, or purple. The car's racing modifications also return from the original Gran Turismo. Next up is Special Stage Route 5. The prize car this time is the Nismo 270R, a rare tuned variant of the Nissan S14 Silvia from 1994. As with its 50 real life examples, it comes in just one color scheme, super black with silver decals. Last of the FR races again ups the power limit, this time to 493 BHP. The prize car here is the Mazda RX-7 GTC, which only comes in innocent blue mica. This RX-7 serves as a nice upgrade to the standard model, with a small increase in horsepower, new aero kit, and better handling. Of interesting note, the RX-7 LM edition was originally intended to be the racing modification for the RX-7 GTC, but was later scrapped and ended up becoming a standalone car. The number 8 was also removed from the sides. Our third event is the MR Challenge. As you would have guessed, it's for any car with an MR drivetrain. The first of three races is at Grand Valley East, the prize car here is the TRD 2000 GT. Despite its name, the car is actually based on the Toyota MR2. It receives a bump to 266 BHP, an increase of around 25 horsepower, which makes it a nice alternative to the standard MR2 GTS. The car only comes in Super White 2 and has no racing modification. The next race takes place at High Speed Ring with a power increase of 493 BHP. The Tom's TO20 is the prize reward, and is very similar to the TRD2000 GT that we showed off from the previous race. With 230 BHP as standard, it's initially not as quick as the TRD2000 GT either. It only comes in Super White 4 and again has no racing modification. The last race is at Red Rock Valley, a track which made its one and only appearance on Gran Turismo 2, and many of the series' fans still hope to see its return one day. You'll need your International A license to attempt this race, and also make sure to bring an MR car that packs a punch, as the power limit is increased to a rather high 591 BHP. The prize car, however, is well worth all the effort, the Ford GT40 race car, based on the iconic golf racing Mark I car that won Le Mans in 1968 and 1969, respectively. The Mark II won in 1966, with the Mark IV winning in 1967. It's an absolute classic and still a very competitive car for even the toughest of races. The four-wheel drive challenge is the last drivetrain-based series of races. The first event is at Seattle Short Course, with a power limit of 345 BHP, and the reward is the Subaru Legacy Touring Wagon GTB. It comes in various different color schemes, although you can also buy this car from the Subaru used car lot. Unlike in Gran Turismo 1, there are no unique color schemes available for unlocking it by beating this race. Its two racing modification color schemes are inherited from the original Gran Turismo, similar to the Sil 80 from the FR Challenge. Race number 2 goes to the full Seattle circuit and ups the power limit to 394 BHP. The Nismo 400R preceding model is the first place prize. Apparently Polyphony believed that the word preceding has an extra I in it. It comes in the same set of colors as the standard Nismo 400R, with the only major differences between the two are that the standard model has racing modification options, while the preceding model doesn't, and the standard model also gains an extra 2 BHP when fully tuned, making this prize car a bit of a dud. The last race takes place at the renowned Laguna Seca Raceway, and ups the power limit to a colossal 690 BHP. The prize car for your efforts is the Mines R32.5 Skyline GTR, which is one of three separate Mines Skylines in the game. It's a fairly strong car, outputting close to 620 BHP at stock, though only has one color scheme and no racing modification options. 
The first race of the lightweight key cup is set at Rome Short Course with a power output of 147 bhp. The prize is a Mugen Honda Beat which is available in red, yellow, grey and white. With a standard output of just 61 horsepower, it'll need tuning to be of any use. But even then to be honest, its only real purpose in the game is to complete the Beat the Beat race found at the Honda dealership. The second race is around Seattle Short Course and oddly is one of the few races to reduce the power output, now down to 98 bhp. The prize car is the Mazda Demio A-Spec, which is another prize car that returns from Gran Turismo 1. As in GT1, it only comes in stone silver metallic. It's an alright car and also retains the two racing modification color schemes from the first game. Of note, the racing exhaust for the Demio does not have a proper sound file, resulting in a highly unusual whining UFO-like engine note. The third and final race goes around Tahiti Road with the power limit still at 98 bhp. The Mugen CRX Pro 2 is the prize card here, which comes in black only. Ultimately, this card could do with a little more power as it only serves as a small improvement over the standard 1991 CRX. The Compact Car Cup is next on our list, and we begin with a race around Rome Short Course with a power limit of 246 bhp. The prize is the Toyota Vitz F, also known as the Yaris in Europe. This car is actually available to buy from the Toyota dealership in all the same colors, making it a somewhat questionable prize car. Its racing modification options are also exactly the same when the car is bought from Toyota. Seattle Short Course pops up again in this championship, and the BHP limit is the same as the first race at 246. The prize car is another vehicle that can be bought from its respective dealership, this time being the Renault Clio 16 Valve, which comes in several different color schemes. Not only is it inferior to the Clio Sport V6, which is quicker and has racing modification options, but is also a rather useless car altogether as it's one of the very few road cars in the game that cannot be upgraded with either a natural aspiration or turbo kit. The final race takes place at Autumn Ring, which bumps the power limit to 295 bhp. Completing the trifecta of questionable prize cars is the Volkswagen Lupo, another car that is available from its new car dealership. The Lupo has several different standard colors, but just one racing modification option. Overall, it does alright for a small FF Volkswagen, but there are much better VW hatchbacks to choose from in-game, such as the Golf. Overall, this cup has perhaps the least appealing prize cars all around in the game. Now we move on to the Luxury Sedan Cup, and the opening race sees players race around the Rome circuit with a power limit of 394 bhp. The car rewarded here is the Honda Accord Type R, which, as mentioned earlier, is largely superior to the Mugen Accord. You can obtain this car in either Nighthawk Black Pearl or Vesuvio Red, and it also has two racing modification options which are red and silver and blue and silver. Of note, in the original Japanese 1.0 release of the game, the racing modification bore the car's name on the underside panel. In all future releases, this was changed to a Kenwood logo. The second race increases the power limit to 493 bhp and is set at Special Stage Route 5. The reward here is a good one, the Toyota Chaser TRD Sports X30, which only comes in Super White 2. Tune it up, racing modify it, and it is a decent option for many races with a bit of weight to help push its way around for those aggressive drivers. Last up is a race around high speed ring with a power limit up to 591 bhp. The prize here is the four door Nissan Skyline GTR Autech version tuned by Nismo. And our first race is around Seattle Short Course. This time there is no horsepower limitation on any of the three races, which technically means you can bring whatever car you want. However, you will need your International A license to compete in any of the races outside of the Japanese release of the game. The prize car is a Plymouth PT Spider, which comes in just one color, Silver Zinc Metallic. It's a fairly good driver's car, but could do with a little more power. The car is erroneously treated as being a naturally aspirated powered vehicle in game, despite the concept actually being turbocharged, as noted by the lack of a boost gauge. 
Next up is a race at the full Seattle circuit. The prize here is the classic Shelby Cobra, which you can unlock in several different colors, although the car does not have any racing modification options. It's a fairly strong muscle car with very good acceleration, however it has a heavy tendency to oversteer with relative ease, even such to the extent that the AI can often be seen struggling to drive the Cobra, some cases even spinning out off the track. Laguna Seca is the last destination on our American road trip at the Chrysler Phaeton is the prize car here, which was a concept designed by Chrysler in 1997. To date, this remains as the only appearance in not just a Gran Turismo game, but any game altogether. Up next is the Convertible Car World Cup, where the first race of the series takes place at Tahiti Road once again, seemingly a popular new track for the game designers at this point in time. Power limit is at 246 bhp. First place reward is the Mazda Speed MX-5 A-Spec, otherwise known as the Mazda Miata. It can be unlocked in white and red, but has no racing modification options. Aside from the A spec, there is also the MX-5 B spec and C spec, which we'll see later. The second race takes us around Grindelwald, with the power limit up to 345 bhp. The prize car for this race is the Toyota MRS Show version. It is only available in one color, and while it performs similarly to the production MRS, it isn't useful for much else. It's not even eligible for the MRS event at the Toyota dealership. Final race is at Trial Mountain, power limit now at 591 bhp. The reward for completing this race is the Dodge Concept Car LM Edition, a returning vehicle from Gran Turismo 1 with a new look. This is a very handy MR car which will be useful for future races, so hang on to it. Next up is the Historic Car Cup, and our first race is once again at Tahiti Road. Horsepower limit is at 246. The prize here is the Honda Mugen CRX Pro 3, which just comes in one color, green. It's an alright prize car, serving best for its low weight and sharp handling, but even despite this, if you've been playing the game the same order we've been showing here, you'll have unlocked better by now. The second race goes to the full-length Rome circuit, the power limit increased to 295 bhp. This race at times can be rather difficult due to a bug in which the Ford GT40 can appear as an opponent despite being 10 bhp over the limit. Regardless, the prize car is the Lotus Europa, an iconic Lotus which is available in multiple color schemes as standard and when racing modified. Its low weight and decent tuning does make it a fairly surprising choice for MR races, though as expected it's naturally not as quick as the Dodge Concept Car LM Edition. Grindelwald is the final location for race number 3, the power limit now being GT40 friendly for players as it's up to 394 bhp. First prize is the Toyota XYR concept car, which is better known as the Celica concept car. It can be unlocked in several different colors, though it lacks any racing modification options. It's not fairly useful, but does at least have a rather neat spoiler. With another one down, we move on to the Station Wagon Cup. All races in this cup have a BHP limit of 394. The short variant of Rome Circuit is up first, and our first prize up for grabs is the Subaru Impreza Wagon WRX STI version 5. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's a fairly strong wagon thanks to the four-wheel drive configuration and decent amount of tuning, but as it can actually be bought from the Subaru used car dealership, its rarity leaves a lot to be desired. Next we get is our first taste of Super Speedway, though the power limit prevents us to drive the track to its limits. Prize car is the Honda Mugen Accord Wagon, which you can unlock in numerous color schemes. It's a fairly average car, however it merely serves as just a wagon variant of the Mugen Accord we unlocked earlier on in the game, so it's more or less something you'll end up checking off the list. The last race is at Special Stage Route 5 and rewards perhaps the best of the wagons, the Nissan Stagia 260 RS tuned by Nismo, which only comes in yellow. If you happen to want a fast station wagon, this is the best of the bunch. Our next series of races is the 80s Sports Car Cup, which is our first of several series to come that consists of five races. The first round is at Trial Mountain, BHP limit at 197. The prize car here is the Honda Mugen Civic Ferio, which comes only in Vogue Silver Metallic. It's a sporty looking Civic, though it lacks enough power to be of much use outside of earlier events. We'll skip past the second race at Special Stage Route 5, as the game rewards the player with the Mugen CRX Pro 3, a car we've already unlocked earlier. Deep Forest is up next, with the power limit staying the same as the last race, up to 345 bhp. The prize car is another Mugen Honda, this time being the Mugen Civic Type R. 
This is an all-around improvement over the Mugen Civic Ferio, and it's actually the most powerful Civic in the game, so it could come in handy. Race number 4 heads to full-length Seattle Circuit, with a BHP limit increased to 394, which also remains the same for the final race. For the fourth race in a row, the prize car is yet another Mugen Honda, the Mugen Integra Type R. Not only is it rather a looker, but it's also a reasonably quick Integra and a strong car for FF Racing. Now we come to the final race in the championship at Tahiti Road. The prize car awarded not only breaks the chain of obtaining moving cars, but is also the best of the prize cars in this cup, the Nissan Skyline Silhouette Formula R30. The car is based off of the number 11 entry by Hesemi Motorsport Tamaka at the 1982 Fuji Super Silhouette Series, driven by Masahiro Hesemi. The car would score two victories in the 1982 season, five victories in 1983, and two victories in the final season in 1984. The car is quite fast and serves very well as an end game choice, but does have rather tricky handling. Still a dangerous car in the right hands. We head back to another three race series with the Grand Touring Car Trophy, which gives us the opportunity to unlock some of the more better prize cars in the game. Our first race is at Red Rock Valley, BHP limit at 394. Placing first rewards the Daishin Silvia GT, driven by Hideo Fukuyama and Nobuyuki Oyagi for the 1999 JGTC season in the GT300 class, David managed a 10th place finish in the Drivers' Championship and 7th in the Team's Championship. Overall, it's a very suitable car that will be useful for the GT300 Championship later on, even if just a little bit more horsepower would have helped the car wonders. Of note, the car is misspelled in-game, missing the H in Daishin, instead just reading Daizin in the garage and in replace. The second race of the championship sees the player at Grand Valley Speedway, with a near 100 BHP limit increase, now at 493. The prize car is the Castro Mugen NSX. Driven by Ryu Michigami and Osamu Nakako, they would take the car to a 4th place finish in the Drivers' Championship and 5th in the Team's Championship for the GT500 class during the 1998 JGTC season. It's certainly a quick and responsive car, though at times its slippery handling may catch you out at times. Certainly a useful car if you can control it. Lastly, we head to Midfield Raceway with the power limit jumping almost another 100 to 591 BHP. Players who complete this race will unlock the Unicia Jex Skyline GTR GT. Being one of only two teams to still run the R33 platform for the 1999 JGTC season in the GT500 class, the car was unlikely to be as competitive with the R34 platforms running that season. Drivers Masahiro Hasemi and Tatsuya Tanaka would achieve a 17th place finish in the Drivers' Championship and a 9th place finish in the Team's Championship. Despite this, it's one of the fastest, if not THE fastest GT500 car in the game thanks to a power output of over 700 horsepower. It can understeer a little at times, but overall it is a dominant car. Now we come to the Pure Sports Car Cup. The first of three races is at Laguna Seca with a power limit of 394 BHP, and winning the race unlocks the Tom's Angel T01, which only comes in Super Red 4. This was Tom's attempt to produce their own vehicle rather than basing it off of a tuned Toyota as a way to commemorate Tom's 20th anniversary. This is a nice little car, though could do with a bit more horsepower to be of greater use to us. Tuning is recommended in this case. Deep Force is up next, with a limit now increased to 443 BHP. Another small prize car is awarded here in the Tommy Kyra ZZ3, which comes in either red or blue. It's another all-around good little car similar to that of the Angel T01, but again could benefit from tuning. However, there's a better option when it comes to Tommy Kyra, which we'll be taking a look at later. Trial Mountain is the last venue for this series, the power limit now increased to 591 BHP. The prize car here is the TVR Tuscan Speed 6, one of the first games to include the then brand new TVR model. This Speed 6 is based off of the concept model revealed at the 1998 Birmingham International Motor Show, and only comes in purple metallic, but has multiple racing modification options. It's a particularly strong car, and is also necessary for the Tuscan race at the TVR dealership, so be sure to hold on to it. Here's where things get shaken up a bit. The two naturally aspirated car number one cup has three races as per usual, at Autumn Ring, Grindelwald, and at Laguna Seca, with all three races having no power restriction. What's different, however, is that the prize cars awarded in this cup are given at random rather than being won at a specific race. In this cup, there are four cars in total that can potentially be won. The first potential prize car is the Mazda Speed MX-5 Miata B-Spec, which only comes in classic red. It serves as a spec'd up 
Cup NA Miata that does help give it a more competitive edge in races, but there's another MX-5 that's up for grabs in this cup. And here it is! The Mazda Speed MX-5 Miata C-Spec is not only possibly the best looking MX-5 in the game, but it's also the best stats-wise, and can be unlocked in one of six different color schemes. As a result, it may take a while to get each color if you're aiming for all of them due to the random chance of getting cars in this cup. The third potential prize card is the Spoon Civic Type R, which can only be obtained in Sunlight Yellow. It's a beefed up upgrade to the standard Civic Type R, though perhaps not as beefed up as the Mugen Civic we unlocked before. Still it's a nice addition to any prize car garage. The last prize car up for grabs is the Spoon Integra Type R, which can only be obtained in Championship White. Similar to the Civic, it's a beefed up upgrade to the standard Integra Type R that improves on the already sharp handling and is fairly lightweight. This makes it one of the best Honda Integras in the game, though if you've been playing in the same order as we've been showcasing at this point, there's better to be one. Akin to the Toon Naturally Aspirated series, the Toon Turbo Car No. 1 Cup also yields a random prize car. The tracks this time around to obtain them are at Special Stage Route 5, Test Course, and Deep Force. As before, there are no power limits for any of the races. Unlike the Naturally Aspirated Cup, however, there are only three prize cars in this cup, all three of which happen to be tuned variants of the R33 chassis Nissan Skyline GTR. First up is the Mines R33 Skyline GTR. This is the second of three Mines Skylines in the game, as we've already seen the R32.5 GTR, and shortly from here we'll also get to see the third and final model. In my, the narrator's, opinion, this is the best of the three Skylines to unlock from this cup, as it has a strong power output of over 600 horsepower and has fairly good handling. This is most certainly worth keeping if you'd like the whole set of Mines cars. Second is the Nismo 400R, another returning car from the original Gran Turismo. All four of its original color schemes plus two racing modification liveries make a return from the first game. Nothing else of the car has changed, though it's certainly easier to unlock here compared to GT1, where you had to get all goals on the International A license. Completing the R33 trio is perhaps the most interesting of the bunch, the HKS R33 Drag GTR. For those who do not know, drag racing was planned to be included in Gran Turismo 2. However, it was removed late in development due to time constraints. This is a car which was designed for the game's drag race mode, but due to the mode's removal, it ultimately serves as another car to the game's large car roster. Its insane power output of over 1,000 horsepower makes it one of the best choices for high-speed racing, however at the cost of of having terrible handling. As a result, you might just want to stick to using this car for tracks like Test Course or Super Speedway. Now we move on to some of the game's most challenging events, beginning with the Gran Turismo All-Star Series, the third consecutive cup to have no power limits on any of the races, and the second cup to consist of five races. The first race is held at Super Speedway, which gives us a good chance to try out our recently acquired Drag Skyline. The prize car is another Mines car, this time however, it's the Mines Lancer Evolution 5. It's a fairly decent car, but serves as the weakest Mines entry in the lineup, plus it gets overshadowed by another car coming up. Of note, this is the only Gran Turismo game to feature the Evo 5 variant of the Mines Lancer Evolution, as it would be replaced in Gran Turismo 3 with the Evo 6 variant. Next up is a race at Special Stage Route 5. We conclude our Mines car prizes with the Mines R34 Skyline GTR. Though the R32.5 and R33 variants are both excellent cars, the R34 is the best of the trio, being quite fast on the straight end and with excellent cornering ability. If you need just one Mines Skyline in GT2, this is the one to go for. Red Rock Valley serves as a venue for race number 3 and is one race you might replace several times. Why? Because upon winning, you're awarded the TVR Speed 12, which can be sold for 500,000 credits, thus making it an excellent choice for making money fast in the game. On top of its high resale value, its outrageous speed and surprisingly sharp handling puts it amongst one of the best cars on the game after a little tuning. This car even gets a racing modification treatment, the white and blue livery being based off the number 12 car driven by John Kent and Bobby Verdon Rowe during the 1998 British GT Championship. Definitely one you'll want to hold on to and use. Similar to the Mines Evo 5, this variant would be outed by Gran Turismo 3 in favor of the more recent Cerbera Speed 12, which would remain with the series until Gran and Turismo 6 as of the time of making this video. Fourth race is a handful of laps around the full Rome circuit, with the Tommy Kyra ZZ2 up for grabs and can be won in one of several colors. Being a small, lightweight GT car with tons of power, it's certainly more than quick, but can be rather tricky to handle. If you're able to control it, it's certainly a useful vehicle to have at your disposal. 
Of note, this Zed Z2 appears to be based off the earliest concept model available, and as only two photos have ever surfaced, one of which being a sketch drawing of the car, it's been debated if this particular ZZ2 ever existed. The design would be overhauled and brought over to Gran Turismo 3, before the car's design would be bought out by Autobach 7 and renamed the ASL Garaya RSL1. Sadly, the car would never make it into production. Finally, we turn to Laguna Seca Raceway, with the prize car being the Nissan R390 GT1 Road Car 97. It's a good prize car, especially after tuning, though it pales in comparison to the race car variant. Of note, the 1997 road car no longer exists, with sources claiming it had been converted into the 1998 long tail spec model that still exists today. Next cup is the Super Touring Car Trophy, the second cup in a row to feature five races, and alike to the naturally aspirated and turbo car cup, the prize car given to the player is random. The races take place at Apricot Hill, Trial Mountain, Laguna Seca, Deep Forest, and Rome Circuit. All five races have a power limit of 493 bhp. Despite there being five races, there are only three potential prize cars to win, meaning getting a duplicate is all but confirmed. The first potential prize car is the Chevrolet Camaro Z28 30th Anniversary, another returning vehicle from the first Gran Turismo. The second is the Tom Supra, not to be mistaken with the Castrol Tom's Racing Supra, which only comes in Super White 4. This Supra benefits from tuning, but its handling can't quite match its prowess on the straights. Even despite this, it still makes for a decent tuned Supra. Lastly, we have yet another returning car from the first Gran Turismo, the TRD 3000 GT. Alike to the Nismo 400R, it's much easier to unlock on Gran Turismo 2, as it was originally awarded for all golds on the A license in GT1. The car still has the same racing modifications, though personally it looks better in its unmodified slate metallic color scheme. Next is the GT300 Championship, which is the first proper championship in the game to require the player to go through all five races in order and finish with the highest amount of points as possible to earn one of four potential race cars. The race order is as follows, Grand Valley East, Laguna Seca, Deep Forest, Midfield Raceway, and lastly, Apricot Hill. The championship's power limit is 591 bhp. The first potential prize car is the Momocorus Apex MR2 GT99, the car that would ultimately win both the GT300 drivers, driven by Mario Nitta, and Team's Championship in the 1999 JGTC season, with teammate Shinichi Takagi finishing fourth. Despite its real-life prowess, it's not quite the go-to for most players, as whilst it's a good MR2 for sure, its lower power output leaves it overshadowed by other cars in the class. One of those other cars happens to be the Zanavi Silvia, which would finish the 1999 season just behind the MR2 in second place by a mere point in both the team's and driver's GT300 championships. The car was driven by Yuji Aide and Takeshi Tsuchiya. Thanks to its higher power output of over 400 bhp, it makes it a worthy car in its class, though it's worth pointing out that in-game, it's ultimately just a palette swap of the previously unlocked Daishin Silvia. Personally, I prefer the look of this over the Daishin, making this my pick out of the two, so it's still worth unlocking if you want to claim all the prize cars in the game. Of note, similar to the Daishin Sylvia, this car is misspelled in game, with Zanavi instead being spelled with a Z rather than an X. PD must have thought the way it's pronounced was also how you spelled it. Potential prize number three in this series is the Wedge Sports Celica GT, which would finish the 1999 season in third place in the team's championship, and drivers Takahiko Hira and Manabu Orito finishing fourth in the driver's championship. Personally, this is the most stylish of the GT300 cars on offer. However, with the slightly heavier weight and FF drivetrain, it may not be everyone's go-to choice. Even despite this, it's still a good choice for GT300 racing in this game, and could serve as an added level of challenge. Lastly, we have the BP Apex Craft Truno. Though its drivers, Minoru Tanaka and Aiki Amemiya, would finish a lowly 25th in the Drivers Championship and 13th in the Teams Championship, the choice of basing their car on the old A86 Truno made them instant fan favorites with JGTC fans. The car would continue to race until 2001, when it would be replaced during the season with an MRS. Sources state that it might have been replaced due to an oil leakage that sadly caused the car to burst into flames after igniting at Sugo. The car now remains in body only, without any attached parts. Upon first inspection, the car looks a little down on power, however it's perfect for chucking around and driving on the limit. Some gamers might also be tempted to use this for drifting after proper tuning to make it suitable for such.
As expected, next up is the GT500 Championship, which takes on the same five race format as before. The prize vehicles are again awarded at random, so you'll have to replay the championship at least four times in order to get all the prize cars. The race order is as follows, Laguna Seca, Super Speedway, Rome Circuit, Trial Mountain, and lastly, Apricot Hill. Unlike the GT300 Championship, the GT500 Championship does not have a power limit. First up, we have the Takata NSX GT99. Driven by Juichi Wakisaka and Katsutomo Kanishi for the GT500 class, the duo would achieve a 4th place finish in the drivers and a 3rd place finish in the team's championship for the 1999 JGTC season. It's certainly quick as you'd expect, but similar to all racing Honda NSXs, its handling tends to be quite unpredictable at times. If you can keep it on the track, it's just as good an option as the rest of the NSXs. Second is the Arda Zexel Skyline GTR GT99. Driven by Aguri Suzuki and Michael Crum, they would obtain a 6th place finish in the drivers and a 5th place finish in the team's championship. It's a strong car overall, though it doesn't obtain as much power as compared to the earlier Yanisia Jex Skyline. It does, however, handle better, meaning that it'll be better suited for the more technical tracks in the game. Potential prize number 3 is the CDMA-1 Surumo Super GT99. It was rather uneventful in the JGTC, only managing an 18th place finish in the Drivers' Championship with drivers Takayuki Kunishida and Masahiko Kondao, and an 11th place finish in the Team's Championship. As with all racing Supras, it offers a good balance of power and handling, making it a recommended choice for races like these. Its black livery with yellow wheels color scheme is also particularly nice, despite the livery design being made to appear unsymmetrical on the sides. To sum it up, it's good looking, so long as you don't have OCD. The last prize is perhaps the most interesting of the bunch, the STP Tizen Viper GT. Yes, the Viper did race in Japan, however it failed to garner any success, with its drivers Aichi Tajemi and Hideshi Matsuda sitting at the bottom of the GT500 point standings in the Drivers' Championship in 23rd, and only just above Endless Sports in the Team's Championship in 13th. The Viper did not race in the final three rounds of the season. As for how it performs in the game, it may not be the fastest Viper you can unlock, though it'll certainly outhandle the rest of them. Overall, it's a well-balanced car and definitely enjoyable to drive. Next up are the Gran Turismo Leagues, and we're kicking off with the Gran Turismo Euro League, as the Nationals races do not award any prize cars. The first race of this series takes place at Apricot Hill, and along with races 2 and 3, has a power limit of 591 bhp. The prize car will be a familiar face to not just fans of the original Gran Turismo, the Gran Turismo fans in general, the Castrol Super GT 96. Driven by Hironori Takuchi and Eric Komaz, Komaz would take the Super to a third place finish in the 1996 JGTC Drivers, and both would help achieve a second place finish in the team's championship for the GT500 class. Unlike the original Gran Turismo, however, the car is only obtainable in its real-life white with green and red color scheme, while the fictional white with blue and red color scheme, as well as the bonus black livery, were both removed. Of note, the fictional white, blue, and red livery was originally supposed to remain in the game and can still be accessed via Game Shark and Action Replay Cheats for the Gran Turismo 2 demo. The car also gains a near 40 BHP upgrade from the first game, setting the car from 646 to 685 BHP. The next race is at Grand Valley Speedway, and as before, the reward is another GT500 vehicle, the Zexel Skyline GTR GT97, not to be confused with the Arda Zexel Skyline we saw before. Driven by Aguri Suzuki and again Eric Komas, Suzuki would send the car to a 4th place finish in the 1997 Drivers Championship, and both drivers would help get the team to 3rd place in the Team's Championship. It's comparable to those of the R34 Racing Skylines in terms of performance, serving as a good alternative to those who prefer the R33 styling rather than the R34. The final race of the Euro Series is a few laps around Rome Circuit, and the prize here, you could argue, is a mere palette swap of the Zexel Skyline from the previous race, the Cure R33 GTR GT97. Driven by Masahiko Kageyama and Masahiko Kondao, the duo would only achieve a 19th place finish, but still attributed to the team's third place finish, as the Cure Skyline was also ran by the Nismo team alongside the Zexel Skyline. It drives pretty much the same as the Zexel Skyline, so really it comes down to which of the two you think has the better palette. 
Now we progress to the Pacific League, with the first race set at Midfield Raceway. Power limit is slightly down from the Euro League in each race, down to 542 BHP. The prize, however, is a good one, the Nissan 300ZX GTS GT97. The specific car in-game is based on a 1997 JGTC GT500 entry by drivers Yuji Tachikawa and Tsuyoshi Takahashi for Team Le Mans, who only raced in the opening round at Suzuka, finishing 10th. The car was due to race at the second round in Fuji, but failed to start before the car was pulled out from the rest of the season. Despite this, the car actually dates back as far as 1989, having raced in the IMSA GT Championship originally for the GTO class before merging into the GTS class in 1992, where driver Steve Millen would send the car to both a Drivers and Teams Championship in the GTS class in 1992 and 1994. It's immensely powerful and has the handling to match, making it an excellent choice for several races in the game, including the endurance races that are to come. Our second race is at Seattle Circuit with our reward car being another returning vehicle from the first game in the Mazda RX-7 LM Edition. Both color schemes are intact, though its wheels have been swapped for some rather lovely gold rims. You can, however, switch the wheels to something more akin to the original if you prefer. The car still serves as a good choice for many races in the game, just like it did in GT1. Last in this series is a race around Laguna Seca. The prize car is the second of two HKS dragsters, the HKS Drag 180SX. As you would have come to expect, this car is just as much of use as the Drag R33 GTR, meaning you're better off keeping this car for the high speed tracks instead. As mentioned before, this car's inclusion was originally for the drag racing mode that got cut from the game as it was not finished before the game was due for release. The last batch of races in the Gran Turismo Leagues make up the Gran Turismo World League. The game treats this as the end game event, which means upon completion the game will display a special message not seen in other races. In another championship format, the race order is as follows. Trial Mountain, Laguna Seca, Apricot Hill, Rome Circuit, and lastly Midfield Raceway. Overall victory will earn you one of four prize cars. The first potential prize car is the iconic CalSonic Skyline GTR GT in its 1999 R34 trim. One of the most recognizable teams in JGTC slash Super GT history, the team has been running in the league since its formation and continues to race to this day. For 1999, drivers Kazuyoshi Hoshino and Masami Kagiyama would bring the car to a 7th place finish in the Drivers' Championship and a 5th place finish in the Team's Championship for Team Impol in the GT500 class. It may be another racing modified Skyline, but it's perhaps the most recognizable of the bunch alongside the yellow Pennzoil Nismo car that is another all-around decent GT500 car. Car. The next potential prize is the Castle Mugen NSX GT. Wait, hold on a minute, haven't we unlocked this car already? Well, not quite. The car we unlocked earlier was based on the 1998 JGTC entry, whereas the prize car for grabs here is based on the 1999 entry. Both Ryo Mishigami and Osamu Nakako returned to drive the car for the 1999 season, though would only finish 10th in the Drivers' Championship. Their sister car, the Takata NSX GT, however, would fare better, and as a result, they would still secure a third place finish in the team's championship. Performance-wise, it is nigh on identical to the 1998 car, and is only slightly different in appearance, especially when you look at the rear spoiler. The next two cars are definitely the ones to aim for in this championship. The first is the Nissan R390 GT1 race car 98, the long tail equivalent of the R390 GT1 that first raced in Le Mans in 1997. Whilst we'll be getting into how its first run at Le Mans went later on, the 1998 car would have a rather impressive showing with all four cars that entered finishing in the top 10. The number 32 car driven by Kazuyoshi Hoshino, Aguri Suzuki, and Masahiko Kageyama would finish highest, coming in a very respectable third place finish overall, whilst the number 30 and number 31 cars would finish 5th and 6th, and the uniquely liveried number 33 car finishing 10th. In game, it's one of the best cars to drive, performing exceptionally well in power, handling, and even ease of use. This is a car you want to just take out onto the track and enjoy. The last prize may be perhaps the most desirable for most Gran Turismo players, the Toyota GT1 Race Car 98. We've already discussed how the 1999 model performed during the license portion of this video, but the 1998 model was Toyota's first foray with the car. Whilst they qualified as highest second on the grid for that year's Le Mans, only the number 27 car of Kaichi Tsuchiya, Okio Kadayama, and Toshio Suzuki would finish, coming in ninth place. The other two cars that entered failed to finish, with the number 28 car getting involved in an accident and the number 29 car suffering from gearbox failure. 
That being said, the GT1 is just as good as the R390, if not better. That being said, both cars are pretty identical, the only difference being in the 1998 car having a more flashier livery compared to the cleaner livery on the 1999 car. Now we move on to the endurance races, the first of which being the classic Grand Valley 300km endurance. As with all endurances to come, there are two potential prize cars to win here. The power limit for this race is a rather high 690 bhp. The first is the Subaru Impreza Rally Car, which is a returning vehicle from the first game. The design of the car, though having many different design changes in-game, resembles the Subaru Impreza WRC 97 that was driven by the likes of Colin McRae in the number 3 car, and alternating between Piero Leati and Kenneth Erickson in the number 4 car. McRae would finish second in the Drivers' Championship, just one point behind winner Tommy Mackinnon. However, the team would secure a third straight Manufacturer's Championship for Subaru. The Impreza in-game comes in both its liveries from the original Gran Turismo. However, the car has taken a heavy depreciation in power, going from 575 in the first game down all the way to just 404 in GT2. As a result, this is a rally car best avoided as it pales in comparison to many other rally cars in the game. The second prize car is the Nissan R390 GT1 Race Card 97, the earlier short tail variant of the Le Mans race car that we took a look at earlier. Whilst its updated model in 1998 fared rather well, the same could not be said for its first outing sadly, as out of the three cars that entered, only the number 23 car of Kazuyoshi Hoshino, Eric Komas, and Masahiko Kagiyama would finish all the way down in 12th place, 5th in class, and 66 laps down on the winning car in the GT1 class that year. The number 22 car would retire after a gearbox failure, and the number 21 car retired from mechanical failure after the car had spun out. Despite this, it's still just as excellent of a vehicle in this game as the 1998 counterpart, despite being slightly down on power. To be honest, however, this power difference is not really noticeable in racing, so take it out and go race. The next endurance race is 200 kilometers at Apricot Hill with a power limit of 591 bhp. The two potential prize cars for this endurance includes a road car and a race car. We'll take a look at the race car first, which is the Dodge Viper GTS-R, an updated version of the car that appears in Gran Turismo 1. This is notable with the inclusion of the side stripes which were not seen on the livery in the first game. The car is based off of the 1996 race car entered by the short-lived Kanaska Southwind Motorsport team. Though the blue stripes livery is very similar to the one entered by Team Orca that same year, the stripes on the side were never added to that car in real life, thus making it just a repaint of the Kanaska livery. As with most Vipers, it's a very powerful car, but it doesn't have the handling to match. It's another case of, if you can control it, it's a useful bit of machinery. As for the road car, up for grabs is the Lancia Stratos, which comes in several color schemes as standard. Even when it's unmodified, the Stratos is a good car, its strengths largely being the fact that it's light and nimble. In real life, the Stratos' small wedge-shaped design made it a standout amongst the rest at the time, and during the 70s, it completely dominated the rally scene, winning the World Rally Championship three years in a row from 1974 to 1976, so it's only fitting that its racing modification is a tribute to the classic Alitalia rally livery. Once you've tuned the engine, it'll be fast enough to tackle many of the game's rally events. Endurance race number three is 100 miles of Seattle Circuit. Power limit is at 591 bhp. The first potential prize car is the Ford Escort Rally Car. Though it lacks a number on the side, the car closely resembles the 1998 WRC Rally Car in which Ford's full-time driver Yuha Kankunen would achieve a fourth place finish in the Drivers' Championship driving the number 7 car. The manufacturer would also achieve a fourth place finish in the team standings in what would be their final year running the Escort before switching to the Focus platform in 1999 with Colin McRae. This is a fairly good choice for rally events, However, it could do with shedding a bit of weight. Even with this, you still should be able to get on well with this car. The second prize car is a Ford GT90. The GT90 was a secret project by a small engineering team in Ford that was made in just over six months and was originally proposed to be the successor to the GT40 and GT70 before ultimately being cancelled. This car is immensely fast, especially for a road car, but has absolutely crazy handling. As a result, most players may only find this car comfortable around oval tracks. 
The fourth endurance race takes place at Laguna Seca, the distance being roughly 200 miles. Unlike the earlier three, this endurance does not have any power limit, meaning any car is welcome. The first prize car may be familiar to players of the original Gran Turismo, as well as a new variant of a car we unlocked earlier, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT LM Edition 99. The successor to the original 3000 GT LM Edition from the first game, it can be unlocked in either white or aqua blue, as well as sporting minor cosmetic changes from the original car. The 99 model gains over 75 bhp from the 96 car, but also adds an extra 20 kilograms. It's still a fairly quick car, though it does tend to understeer at times. Still, it's a great car and worth obtaining. The other prize car is the Toyota Celica Rally car. Whilst it's definitely a looker, the unfortunate news is that this car never actually existed, as Toyota was still using the Corolla when this game was made in the WRC. Thankfully, however, with a surprisingly high power output of 569 bhp at a swap to four-wheel drive, it's easily one of the best off-road cars in the game, even better than the classic Celica Rally cars. It's powerful and has the handling to match a great choice for the rally events. Next, we head over to Southern Europe for a two-hour endurance race around Rome Circuit. Though the race is set to 99 laps, the race will end after the lap you're on when the race time exceeds two hours. Again, there is no power limit for this endurance. The first prize car is the Toyota Corolla Rally Car 97. The Corolla in 1997 marked Toyota's return to the WRC after the manufacturer had been banned from entering in 1996 when they were caught using illegal turbo restrictors at the 1995 Rally Catalunya with the Celica GT4 ST205. Toyota returned as the season was progressing, with Didier Auriel driving the car in all remaining rounds. He would ultimately finish 11th in the Drivers' Championship. Sadly, compared to the Celica from earlier, this rally car is a tad bit underpowered, and as a result, you're more likely to be better off using the Celica. The second prize car also just so happens to be another Toyota, in this case the Toyota Altezza LM Edition. The car can be won in three colors, white, gray, and yellow. In many ways, thanks to its design cues and power output, the Altezza LM Edition can be seen as a spiritual successor to the Chaser LM Edition from the first Gran Turismo. The design cues also gives it a striking resemblance to the likes of a DTM touring car. This is a pretty quick car and has fairly good handling as well, making it a nice choice for most races. Moving on to the next endurance race, we've got 30 laps around Trial Mountain. Sounds like fun, right? Well, perhaps not when you see that the power limit is set to a mere 295 bhp. Thankfully, you'll only have to do this race once, as there is only one prize car to win, the only endurance to have one prize car, the Denso Sard Super GT 99. Though Team Sard have been running in the JGTC slash Super GT since its inception, the 1999 season was a season to forget. Its drivers, Drift King Keiji Tuchiya and Masahiko Kageyama, would only manage a 22nd place finish in the Drivers' Championship and 12th in the Team's Championship, the lowest result amongst the teams running a Supra that year. In game, at least, it still performs just as well as the other racing Supras, and still ranks it amongst some of the best GT500 cars in the game. And here we are, the final endurance race in the game, the final race in the game, and the last two prize cars left in the game. The special stage Route 5 All Night Endurance Race, consisting of 50 laps, and thankfully back to having no power limit, meaning all cars are accepted. The first of our remaining prize cars is the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 Rally Car, the car in which Tommy Mackinnon would achieve his fourth consecutive and final Drivers' Championship in the WRC. It's also perhaps amongst the most recognizable of their Evo Rally Cars alongside the Evolution 5, and would be the model retained for future Gran Turismo games. To be fair, it's a particularly good rally car, they're not quite on the same pace as the Celica we unlocked before. Even still, it looks awesome, so it's got that going for it. And lastly, our final prize car on offer is the new and upgraded TVR Cerbera LM Edition. Though a returning vehicle from the first Gran Turismo, only the silver and maroon color scheme remains from the first game, as the silver and green has been replaced with a rather nice silver and blue scheme in its place. While the Impreza rally car may be superior in the original Gran Turismo, the Cerbera LM Edition just keeps getting better. It was certainly no slouch in GT1, but here it's even quicker and has the handling package to match. Certainly an excellent vehicle and worth getting as your potential final prize if you've been playing the game in the order we've been going through. And with that, we've now unlocked all of Gran Turismo 2's prize cars. As you can gather, there was a lot more in the way of prize cars in comparison to the first game, and a much more diverse list of vehicles that really helped to bolster not just the overall car roster, 
but our garage. It's certainly been a ride and now our garage is full of fantastic and unique vehicles to help conquer any race in the game. All that's left from here is to just sit back and relax. Or go racing with our vehicles, that too. Thank you so much for watching. If you believe we've missed anything, let us know down below in the comments. I've been Thunder from HG Central, and make sure to check out my channel if you enjoy racing games and the odd bit of humor. Huge thanks to MattJ155 for letting me participate in this video, and we hope to see you all again real soon.